We turn now to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. Since you have, in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. In an earlier study, we had looked at 1 Peter 5.12, where Peter expresses the reason for this letter, saying that he had exhorted and testified briefly in this letter that this is the true grace of God, stand firm in it. So Peter's aim in writing this letter was to explain to the believers what the true grace of God was because many were misunderstanding what grace actually meant. And therefore, this message in this letter has special relevance for our day because many today also misunderstand what grace actually means. Grace does not mean that now we are free to ignore God's commandments or his law. On the contrary, when Peter writes about the true grace of God in this letter, he begins with obedience in verse 2. Obedience to Jesus Christ is the purpose, he says, why God chose us. The purpose with which we are sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And further down in the same chapter, 1 Peter 1, 14, he says, As children of obedience, do not be conformed to the former lusts which are yours in your ignorance, to that old way of life. Give it up. Now you are children of obedience. And like the one who has called you is holy, you are to be holy. And here in verse 22, which we just read, again he speaks about obedience. Three times in this chapter, obedience. The true grace of God leads us to obedience to the truth, obedience to God's commandments, to his law. The difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament is this, that under the law they could obey the commandments only externally, but under the new covenant which has come through Jesus we receive grace so that we can obey the commandments within our heart as well. In addition to obeying it externally, we obey it in our hearts as well. And so here it says, Since you have in obedience to the truth purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, when we obey the truth, it leads to a purification of our soul, a purification of our soul from the uncleanness that we have inherited from our forefathers. Our soul has got all types of desires that are contrary to God's laws. We are purified from those uncleannesses as we obey the truth. We are cleansed in the blood of Christ. He has already spoken about the blood of Christ in verse 19 as having purchased us from our old futile way of life. But now he speaks of a purification of our soul through obedience to the truth. Here is a purification that many Christians know not, nothing about almost. In obedience to the truth, we purify our souls. And what does this lead to? It leads to a sincere love of the brethren. God's laws can be summed up in two statements. To love God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind and to love our neighbor as ourselves. The sum total of all of God's laws is here. In one word, love. Jesus spoke that very clearly. And so when we purify our souls, we purify our souls of all that is contrary to God's perfect law of love. As God gives us light, as the truth shines into our hearts, we discover those areas of our personality that are tainted by selfishness and self-centeredness and pride, things that are contrary to God's law of love. And we purify ourselves by obeying the truth which God shows us. And thus, we come to a sincere love of the brethren. As long as there is a love of the brethren which is merely external, it is insincere. A true love for the brethren is that which comes from within. 
And when the Holy Spirit is given to us, he begins flowing as a river from our innermost being. Now he says that you have purified your souls through obedience to the truth unto a sincere love of the brothers. Go ahead and fervently love one another from the heart. In other words, increase in this love. Let it be fanned to a strong flame so that you have a boiling hot love for the brothers. It's not enough to have a warm attitude towards one another. That's good. But something better than that which God demands is that this warm love becomes a boiling hot love. And just like boiling water sterilizes it of all the germs in it, when our hearts are boiling hot with love, any germ of impurity or an unloving thought that comes to us as a temptation is immediately burnt up. Our hearts are kept sterilized in a pure, fervent, boiling hot love for one another from the heart. And this is something that is a distinctively New Testament phrase. From the heart, from deep within, from the innermost being. It was only possible through the Holy Spirit being given on the day of Pentecost to dwell in our innermost being. And so we see that this is the goal of all teaching in the New Testament. Paul also says this in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. The goal of our instruction, he says, is love. He's writing to Timothy and saying, the purpose of all the teaching that we give in the church is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. From a pure heart, love. We could sum up the entire purpose with which Christ has come as this, that our hearts may be purified so that it might be brought to a place of pure, fervent love for one another. And then he goes on to say in 1 Peter 1, verse 23, You have been born again, not of seed which is perishable. You were first born through seed from your father, which is perishable. But now, he says, you've had a second birth through seed which is imperishable. And this seed is the living and abiding word of God. God's word is like a seed that has brought us to new birth and that continues to help us to grow as he speaks of later on in chapter 2 verse 2. But here we see how the new birth comes through the receiving of God's word as a living seed into our hearts. Not just that we allow it to instruct our mind, but we receive this as a living seed into our hearts. And when we do that, God's word brings us to new birth. The joint operation of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. Just like in Genesis 1, the first paragraph we read, the Spirit of God moved upon that dark earth and the Word of God went forth saying, Let there be light. And the joint operation of the Holy Spirit and God's Word brought life into death, light into darkness. So today, God's Word and the Holy Spirit has brought new birth into us. Then he quotes an Old Testament scripture that all flesh is like grass. All that life which we have received from our human parents through our first birth. It's like grass. It's perishable. It's glory. is like the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower falls away. Everything that we are after the flesh, our intelligence, our personality after the flesh, our beauty, everything is perishable. But the word of the Lord abides forever. And this is the word of the gospel. This word of the Lord which abides forever is Peter says, the word of the gospel which was preached to you. The gospel of the grace of God, which brings you to new birth, which brings you to receive God's power so that you can be saved from sin, so that your souls can be purified, so that God's laws of love 
can now be written within your heart. So open your heart, he says, to this word, and it will do its work within you.